Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Nova Lee Wilder. How are you doing today? I'm so good. Thank you for having me, Dawn. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm super excited to talk about your name, by the way. But mm -hmm. um, Nova Lee is on the show to talk about numerology, which I've had two other episodes with numerologists, but mm -hmm. I never asked them, which I can't believe I never asked them. Um, does each number have a meaning? Yes. <laughs> that probably seems obvious. Yeah. yeah. That probably seems obvious, but like I was thinking, okay, one through nine. And then I was mm -hmm. thinking, like, where does it end? Like, do, does 1,100 and... Yeah, it never ends. It never okay. ends. Um, so depending on what system you use or approach you have or s school of numerology you kind of adhere to or study, there are going to be different meanings or energies behind each number. Uh, we do agree on most of them. <laughs> if you talk to different numerologists, you're going to see that there's a, a general overlap. Um, then we disagree on a few, but basically each number can always, you can always find the digit sum. So you can always like reduce a larger number to okay. the digit sum of that number. And that's going to tell you something about the larger number. Mm -hmm. um, and because I don't know where we will probably touch on angel numbers. Of course, there's also meaning behind sequences, longer numbers, repeating numbers. There is a difference between a thousand and one or like eleven hundred and eleven like one 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 right like there are different energies in it whenever you also see a number repeated that amplifies the message or the energy behind it so like say you see eleven eleven or say you see your birthday numbers or you have a lucky number and you start seeing it everywhere the more you see it the more the message and the energy behind that number is kind of present and trying to get through to you who or what is trying to get through to you? Well, it depends. I believe that we all kind of have a spiritual guide team. Um, sometimes it can be helpful for people to think about them as like angels that have like as part of their um, job description to kind of guide and support and help and show up for you. For other people, it makes more sense to think about it as their ancestors, people who've passed on. Like there's like a, like an ancestry connection. Like sometimes mm -hmm. that makes more sense because if you've had someone pass, maybe you've also had that experience of like still feeling them there or seeing or hearing or smelling things that reminds you of like a grandmother. And so it makes sense that like, the messages or stuff that comes through, like you connect it to that presence. But I just think that there is something much larger than us that is pure love and that is trying to help us as best it can through whatever like pathways that we are open to. And often numbers or like seeing angel numbers is one of the ways that like people have that awakening where they go, it can't be a coincidence anymore. Now I've seen this number so many times or had this experience so many times. There must be more. And as soon as we go, there must be more. I think our little team goes, okay, I got her. <laughs> We're getting through. <laughs> We're sending you some bigger stuff now. Um, yeah. yeah. So is that, okay, well then, is that what angel numbers are? Yes. Yes. I mean, angel numbers is a term within numerology that has only really gotten to be like more mainstream since like the 90s before then we didn't really call it angel numbers people were just like lucky numbers repeating numbers spiritual numbers what have okay. you um but there are a bunch of kind of new age thinkers and writers and authors in the 90s who were like you need to know about this like i'll write a whole book only about angel numbers where before maybe it was more like you know a chapter in a numerology book that touched upon it Okay. Yeah. Cause I have had family members and friends saying, you know, if you have somebody on that does numerology, ask them why I'm always seeing the same numbers all the time. So does it matter that you're seeing numbers all the time or does it matter exactly what numbers you're seeing every time? Like if I always look and I see that it's my birth numbers, 
oh gosh, how do I word this? Am, yeah, I what, to, and like, am I trying to narrow in on the breakdown of when it breaks down to a certain, certain digit or is it the fact that it's my birthday numbers? So there's a couple of things in this. Like I think of numerology and kind of like the world of numbers as a language. And so when we learn a language, we usually start with just one or two words. <laughs> Maybe we learn how to say yes or no, or right. like energetically, I would say green light or red light. Like, is this like a yes? Am I leaning forward? Does it feel like a confirmation? Is something in me going yes towards something? Or do I have it as like a red light? Something says stop, slow down, read the fine print check in with yourself um so numbers can both kind of be people often will have like it'll be part of like an awakening on many levels to see numbers so like say we see 11 11 1 1 1 1 that's like a very often yeah people start seeing right and once you start noticing and you start getting sensitive to it, you might get more words, you might get more um, information in and you might get that like, what is it? What is it? <laughs> and I often say, well, how are you feeling? What's going on in your life and right this moment when you're seeing it? Is there a general theme coming up? Are you going through a transformation, an awakening, a moving? Are you moving the boxes in your head? somewhere else are you moving like physically in the world are you going through a big step then like it makes sense that energetically things are also shifting if you see your birthday and that's like a repeating theme then I would say that there are probably messages within kind of the map of your birthday like in numerology it's the numeroscope and astrology is the horoscope in palmistry it's your palm print like whatever there's oh, like okay. a message in the map that you have maybe not fully embraced. So when you see your birthday, I would say maybe you should go find a tool and like like numerology or astrology and look closer at the map. Or it could be human design, whatever you're kind of attracted to. And of course, you should also be attracted to the reader or the user of that mm -hmm. tool. Because I find that when I'm reminded or I see my birthday, it's usually one of those core patterns in my personality that is needing attention because like I'm born on the 28th. If you find the digit sum of 28, you're going to find that that's a one. So when I see the number 28 or I see my whole birthday, I'm like, okay, this is a lesson for me about my oneness, like the energy of being a one. What are those core lessons? Okay. Leadership. Am I shying away? Am I playing too small? Am I pretending to be a follower when I'm really a leader? Am mm. I trying to manipulate people? Because that's a very low level of leadership, trying to get them to do what I want. Am I like, yeah, where am I on kind of the scale of that oneness and, and leadership energy? And, and is there a way where I could like push myself upwards where it feels better to be me? So depending on the number you see, um, the message will be different or like the meaning will be different. Um, and also some people will have, you know, I've written a book about angel numbers. There are general messages behind each number, but nothing kind of rules over you. <laughs> like right. if you're, if you have a feeling that seeing 22 is a very specific message, from a very specific person or something that then I don't think you should look it up in my book. Then I think you should trust Go <laughs> what with your you, gut. uh, yeah. And, and you should also trust always your own interpretation. Like I've been doing this for a number of years and like the depth of each number still astonishes me. And I go deeper with it and I'm like, Oh, it's just the same nine numbers, but my understanding of what they mean for each person or in their names or in their angel numbers or in their birthdays or what it means to live in a building that has that number or what it means to look at the energy behind a, a, a title of a book or or why certain numbers show up more like in actors or like uh, singers or presidents or like the depth of my understanding is always um, 
growing so it might also happen to you if you see numbers mm -hmm. that like what felt like a specific message when you were in your 20s feel like a slightly different message when you're in your 30s or 50s or what have you right well and now we have the internet and you know yes. books too but like what were, did you have many places or ways to research when you first started learning numerology was it difficult or has it is it old 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 where it was easy to find <laughs> Well, it, it depends on, to me, studying things is more a matter of choosing your teacher and kind of understanding the filter that we all are on the information we have. So no one is completely objective. No author is completely objective. Sure. We are yeah. all kind of like children of our time or like... Yeah we carry trauma or we carry like, maybe we think we are superior <laughs> in some way or our numbers are superior. Um, and maybe also like something I have learned from also having to sell my services is that like, it's very hard to be, um, to remove yourself from the information. So like, I picked teachers when I was starting out and I picked different teachers when I got a little bit, bit into it. And I read the books a certain way when I was reading them for the first time and I read them differently now. And I can also tell that like, there's this thing in the world where people want the newest. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like I, I have uh, admissions calls with people who are studying with me and I always, after the admission call, like I give them the literature list for the school. Cause I'm like, even if you don't sign up, I think you should read. And sometimes people will go, don't you have something newer? Some yeah. of these books are really old, like really old. Like some of them are for like 1920s. Like that's a really old book. <laughs> and I go, no, but like the core information, the core energy behind all of this is the same and you're actually going to learn something from reading books about the same subject but from different people throughout like time because then it gets easier to sort like what is the actual information and what is the author's opinion or how they spin it right or who they apply it to or how they apply it so yeah I mean we're always learning I'm always learning yeah um, that's I love that yeah what okay go back now to <laughs> where you changed your name okay what, what prompted that so a lot of things prompted that I think I've always kind of realized that our um, identities are a lot more malleable or like they're not set in stone like we all have ideas about who we are in the world and we also have ideas that we only ideas about herself that we only meet at certain ages. And so like my sister, for example, when she had children, suddenly she went through all her clothes and got rid of all her mini skirts because she was like, no, I'm a mom now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, identities are not just yeah. like, again, they're also through time. So um, back in 2014, I had made the decision that like I was playing too small and I was studying acting in New York and I had like uprooted my life because I come from Denmark originally. So like I had moved continents. I was speaking a different language. I was meeting new people. They didn't know anything about me. And I really had like a clean slate, the cleanest slate that I've ever had probably. Right. And I was facing <laughs> the reality that a lot of my behaviors and patterns internally and externally were just repeating themselves and I was like oh my gosh it is me I'm doing these things like <laughs> why can I not oh escape it and or like what's wrong with me like I mean that's unfortunately a core but like thing for many of us that goes yeah. like what is why why can't I do something different or like why can't I shake this thing and so I had a friend who'd had a session and a name change with a neurologist. And I was very like, this is weird. This is very weird what you're doing, but I love you. So like, okay. Yeah. Um, and a lot of things shifted in her life 
almost immediately. And since I knew her really well, I knew that some of these things were really, really, really ingrained things that right. should not be able to be shifted so easily. And I was like a little bit like, F it, you know, like, let me just try this. So I had a session with a neurologist and it was very uncomfortable because she could see everything. And she was not, you know, like the gloves were off. She was very direct and very right about everything she said. And she was like, I'm really, really sorry, but you can't, if you want to do this, like if you want to change your name according to numerology, you can't keep any of it. You can't keep your first name or your middle name or your last name. You, you, you have to like let it all go. Um, I mean, she had the energy because she was freshly out of numerology school. So she was just a little bit like all in on it. And I think maybe as I think about it now, when I um, work with people, I'm like, there probably would have been a way we could have spelled some, spelled some things differently. There was probably a way to kind of keep certain things, but she was yeah. very like, it all has to go. And I was like, okay, okay. And so I changed my entire name. Um, and the good thing was that I was in the U.S. So when I came to my friends and I told them I changed my name, they had only known me for six months. So they was like, that's weird, but okay. I mean, cool. I mean, you're an actor. They do that, <laughs> right? Like, okay. I mean, if that's what you want to do. What, what am I going to do? Right. And so um, I got to, I didn't really go home and see people until that program was done. And that was two years. And by then, both the name and the identity and all of the shifts that came from that name change had become very rooted in me. So when I got home, people were like, what happened? <laughs> uh, I was like, well, I did. Like, the name change, like, I believe the two things can be true at once. Like, by shifting a certain part of your identity, like the belief of who you are, that's going to ripple through everything in your life whether you believe in numerology or not, like right. changing a core thing about yourself, something that you felt like or thought like was set in stone, proving to yourself that you can change that is a positive thing. Like that's going to do something for your mindset. I, it was, I mean, so many things changed. My, my relationship to my body, to love, to food, to my own talent, uh, to my to my understanding of that I could do hard things, <laughs> like that I wow. really truly could do hard things. And it's that thing of like, if you show up as a different person, then people are going to treat you as that person. Right. So you probably know I'm going to ask this. What did your parents say when you changed the name that they gave you at birth? That has to yeah, be Yeah, I mean... My mom had passed, so oh, I don't think I even thought about um, so much what she would think. I did, I, kn I knew with my dad, but that's also one of the things, like if you do it for yourself, if it's truly for yourself, then other people's opinions or troubles, because sometimes they can be like, oh, that's so hard. I don't know, and I've called you this forever. And to me, you'll always be- Yeah, right. You know, people can say a lot of things that they don't actually realize or maybe hurtful or mm -hmm. dismissive, but they mm -hmm. can just kind of say it. And I mean, to me, like he was always like, oh, but to me, you'll always be, you know, and then he had a nickname for me when I was a kid. And I was like, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay to me that to to you, you'll always be, or like that you're going to get stuck in this for a little bit. I mean, now he calls me Nova. Um, but I also am aware that, there's probably always a split second where he has to correct himself in his mind. Um, I mean, it wasn't that hard. I would, but I think also by then, like I changed my name when I was like 26 or 27. And by then I had moved through a lot of my teenage issues with how I didn't feel maybe supported by my family or understood by my family or like, I'm the only one who fully went the artistic way um, where everyone else is maybe a little bit more within whatever system they have chosen. Right. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm already the crazy one. <laughs> so just, just go with it. <laughs> it. You know, I mean, what am I going to yeah. do? 
and also like you, you know I tell this to my clients when they're like how am I going to tell people this and how are they going to react I'm like people who have a problem will change with change are going to have a problem with you and you probably I also say to people you can change your name and not tell them immediately and they're going to find something energetically to pick on because they can tell like mm -hmm. we can tell like when something shifts in someone around you and if you have a problem with that shift even if it's not voiced like ugh, it's gonna like trigger something very human in us where we might get on go on the defensive yeah gosh yeah. I was just thinking because I know you were an actress I was just thinking about how a lot I won't say most of actors and actresses don't go by their real names that's so yes. interesting when I think about what you did like, do you think that's what helped catapult them in their careers because they didn't identify with that name anymore? And so they were able to take on a new persona. I think there is an element of that thing of allowing yourself to transform, which is what like the base thing that an actor needs to do. If you're not able to transform, then you can only kind of play a version of yourself. And I think we all know actors who forever play Mm -hmm. a version of themselves that doesn't mean that they're bad actors but they can't fully transform and one of the gifts of being an actor and going through that transformation is that you realize that like a lot of things are just a point of view mm -hmm. it's just a point of view on the world or other people or a specific race or gender or people with a certain name or something that like the point of view is everything and informs everything around you and how you carry yourself and how you walk and talk and everything like that right. so I think shifting your identity like that's one of the things that actors do all the time so for example you know Meryl Streep is not actual Meryl Streep and Emma Stone is not actually Emma Stone and like I think living that identity or that persona for the world can definitely help you like have that thing where you get more playful with it mm -hmm. because if we're all just playing yeah, yeah <laughs> like true. and we think we're so we're so attached to the version of us like that we're performing and so sometimes it's really good to have that like I think that's a gift to any actor or any like creative person who puts on the persona of the artist mm -hmm. and that's also we get to choose like uh, or like Am I the tortured artist? Am I the satisfied artist? Am I the the supported artist? Like, which version of myself am I like choosing to show up as today right. on set or personally in my business? Yeah. Hmm. So, <laughs> what was it that made you think, okay, I'm all in. I'm changing my name, like, because that's a big step. I think I was like a little bit um a rebel in, in terms I was like I'll just do it also like a, I mean I am Danish so I changed it in the Danish mm -hmm. system or like within that system and it's very very easy to do it like you log in online you pay like $80 you put in the new name it takes 24 hours you got a new name oh my and gosh. it's changed in all systems across wow. Denmark so there's also a reason why maybe numerology is having like their like a heyday <laughs> in Denmark or in certain Scandinavian countries and like I, for sure like working with international clients I can tell that certain countries have made it very very easy for their citizens to mm -hmm. change their name and others have made it slightly harder and even in the U.S. each state and court and like county also have made it like either easier or harder right. to do um I forgot your question <laughs> well I was asking I and I kind of asked oh what made one. me oh yeah, yeah yeah no what made me um so I was both like, it's gonna, it's very easy to do, okay. And I had, I knew someone who had done it, cool. And then I was like, and if it doesn't work, I'll just change it back. It was kind of like a, like a little safety right. thought that was like, I mean, if I do it and it doesn't work, then I can, you know, like, it's a choice, but it's not like chopping off an arm right or you know like it's I was like this is this is a choice that I will see through but it's it's a big deal but it's not as big of a deal as like I mean it could be bigger I could I don't know I was like it's not yeah a, I could see that yeah 
And so, like, I mean, I also knew, which I know now, that, like, sometimes we need those little safety thoughts. <laughs> yeah. You know, that tells us, like, oh, but it's no big deal. Right. I knew the moment I did it that I would never go back. What made you pick your name? Well, I mean, that was, like, some practical things where, like, you know, uh, my first name before was Ava. And so Nova was, like very obvious like that's also what I again I'm gonna see this say this again but like when I tell my clients like if you have a short name maybe if you want to change it we're gonna look at short names like I'm not gonna pick your name for you but like going from Ava to Galadriel would have been a jump yeah <laughs> but Ava to Nova okay that was not a big deal to me mm -hmm. um, and then I mean I knew I wanted something that would work in Danish and in um English speaking countries mm -hmm. and I also knew that like you know like in Danish we have different letters so I was like it needs to be easy to spell like I'm over having to spell things differently or the pronunciation is weird um, and I also was like I don't want to be named after other people mm -hmm. or that sounds wrong because I definitely uh, was a little inspired by Gene Wilder um <laughs> why not why not why right um I was like sometimes it's really healthy to cut certain connections to your family specifically if there's I mean there are not that many bad stories in my family but definitely like some stories I've heard about you know people being named after friends that their parents oh, sure. no longer talk to yeah, or like you true. know a hated aunt or or just something where like the story or the energy that gets told around that name is negative mm -hmm. and yeah or like some you know pastor or someone who, who like did the because that happened to me where the um when I got baptized the um the priest uh swept uh, uh switched the names I was supposed to be Christine Ava and he was like that's wrong so he put Ava Christine on my uh, certificate and, you know, they never got it fixed. So like until oh. I was eight, I actually was called Christine. And only when I was eight, I realized that my first name was actually Ava. And like any good eight-year-old girl, I was like, now I want to be called Ava. <laughs> and I like, made a whole big deal about it. So um, like there's just a lot of stories often yeah. attached to our names. And sometimes that thing about naming yourself can be so transformative and like such a reclamation. I have lots of clients who also, you know, it's after divorce where they're like, do I go back to my maiden name? Do I keep his name? I never liked his name. Why did I take it in the first place? <laughs> Ooh, I am telling you right now, public service announcement. If you do not like his name, do not take it. Like you get married. Like, please don't, please don't do it. Gosh, that's interesting. Um, what was I going to ask something about, well, if you, it, it, okay, there's some people that specialize like in life path or your mm. soul path number, everybody's got their specialty is your specialty about helping people come up with new names. Is that your thing? Yeah, specifically, I love, um, name change sessions. So like, I definitely do readings. If you want to know what's in your birthday and your current name, like I can totally tell you that, but I find any spiritual tool the most helpful when there's a practical application. And for me, for numerology, the practical application of like, how's your current name impacting you? And what could a new name open up for you? And so I never pick the specific names. I just pick the name vibration and then I give people name lists to choose from or be inspired by. And so, yeah. I did think about <laughs> niching down to just be like the name changer. But I was like, <laughs> we're already doing numerology. It's already pretty specific and like like yeah. a teeny tiny uh, part of the spiritual world that I'm uh, like unfolding in and helping people in. So yeah, numerology and name change. How do you because know I find if it's that, your like, name? How do you know if it's your name that's holding you back though? Well, I mean, get a reading. Okay, <laughs> okay. Or we, I mean, read a book on specifically Chaldean numerology because that's that's the kind I use and that's the one that 
specifically has like tools and more in-depth descriptions of what does each name vibration do and then the reading would help you to like what does it do to you because like okay. you are a specific expression of energy in the world and so each name vibration is going to kind of filter that experience differently so I could like you know I've written a book about that too like there are general descriptions of each name vibration but to truly understand the impact you would needs to like have someone apply it to you kind of like with astrology like mm -hmm. you could read about what does a transit in neptune or something or mean generally but you would have to be like well okay so i'm a leo rising and an aries moon and what does it mean for me right. uh, when that happens so like the specific yeah the specificity of the tool comes with like applying it directly to you okay well, going back, so you have your own podcast. Yes. The Numerology Podcast. And then you also, how many books have you written? I know you have one for sure. I have two. I have a little bit of Numerology, which was my first book. And then a little bit of Angel Numbers just came out in December of 2023. And now I'm writing on my next book, which hopefully will be done this year. Let's see. You know, the two first books are shorter books. Um, and the next one is a bigger um, I just, one of the things I've learned from doing this is like, everyone just wants more. Yeah. And so like my next book is more. <laughs> so it's actually hard to know how much more. Right. It's gonna to be, stop. But it's definitely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, because, you know, you get inspired. You're like, I mean, at least I do. I'm like, I know something happens in the media and I get fixated on like, oh, I shouldn't do a case study on Taylor Swift because she's such a good example of four energy or, oh, I should do like a case study on this person or that person mm -hmm. because they're such a good example of something. And then I'm like, well, do people want to, I mean, people want to know about themselves. So like, do they see themselves in like this famous person mm -hmm. or not? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I will look up people then to see if they're a Gemini too, and then to see mm -hmm. if their birthday is the same birthday as mine. And then it's like, oh my gosh, all these famous people have a birthday the same day as mine. You know, maybe yeah. I'll be famous. <laughs> maybe that's what it means. I mean, we're all looking for meaning. I think that's what it boils down to. And anybody can be a skeptic and say that they're not, but they are. They're secretly. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They can are. you predict stuff with numerology? We can do certain things. Um one of the tools in numerology are the yearly cycles um, where we can kind of see what does it mean to have your birthday and the name you carry through time. Mm. So like how, and it's not like a specific thing where we can see like, oh, on October 5th, you went into 7-Eleven and you <laughs> bought a pack <laughs> of gum and then you left and then you went home and watched TV. We can more see kind of like general waves. So for example, people can have waves where if they tell me they're like all these things and I'm looking to get pregnant and I'm like, okay, cool. Like I can look at your yearly cycles and see if there's any expansive themes coming up, love themes, fertility themes, something like that. I can also, if people say, I really don't want to get pregnant, then I can say, well, then you really should um, be careful around this time. And also translate these things into the specific person I'm talking to because like I had a wonderful session with a person who was like all these things are going on and like money and blah blah and I was like okay well it looks to me that one of the things that are coming up for you is like you spend money on things and people you love which means that the next time you have one of these love themes you should not be going to the pound and look at kittens because you're going to come home with, you know, like there are things they're the same, like we can also go window shop. And then there are certain periods of our life where like, we'll, we'll end up emptying the store and come home with everything. Right. And so translating, like it is, you know, it is saying what's going to happen, but it's more kind of saying, these are the themes you're going through. And then depending okay. on, of course, what's in your name, some of these themes are going to have more impact. For example, if you have a lot of 
uh, creativity or ideas, or maybe you have um, name vibrations that are connected to like public speaking or fans or audiences. Mm -hmm. If there's a theme in your yearly cycles that says fans and audiences and being seen and being heard, then I'm going to talk to you about that. And of course, also tell you that we can't be heard for things we don't share. So that would be a good time to share or like, like a lot of these things are going to happen totally automatically. For example, the last time, like the first time I came up with a book, it completely aligned with a the theme in my yearly cycles about being seen and heard and like uh, growing your audience or growing your followers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, that makes sense. But that I hadn't even pictured it. You know, I had just right. written a book, but it aligned. So we can do that. We can also kind of go. That doesn't mean you can't come out with a book at any time. Of right. You can. But it could, or like you can also get pregnant without it being, you know, in your yearly cycles, just as you can get divorced or something like that. But like major themes, also like things like um, losses. Sometimes they are like that we lose someone, but sometimes we lose our footing in life. And sometimes that's the message. And so like the yearly cycles are usually helpful going forward where we can look back and go, okay, I've had this theme before of loss. Is there any notes that I would give myself going into a new theme? I mean, I can't lose the same thing, but maybe I could take better care of myself in okay. this, you know, in this uh, wave that's coming. And that's usually what I tell people if things look tough. I'm like, this is when we schedule the massage. This is where we say no to hosting Christmas. If you know <laughs> that that's one of our triggers. Right. You know, like this, this is like, we can just be kinder to ourselves mm -hmm. in those periods of time. Yeah. Gosh, that is just fascinating. It really is. I had no idea. Um, I mean, and I, like I said, I've done other episodes on numbers, but it's crazy at the limitless possibilities there are out there just as many as there are numbers. Yeah. Well, it's also the intuitive aspect. I find to me how I would read the numbers or read a yearly cycle or maybe how I would convey information when I started out is different today. So like sometimes who you talk to is also just really the, the key. Mm -hmm. Like where you're like, you're not gonna listen to the book or the app or the YouTube video, but you are going to listen to a certain voice mm -hmm. or like a certain person. So I find that also like, it's just part of uh, the reading of anything is like the reader that I don't know. That's just a thing that I've learned over time. Sometimes with getting a reading is like the most important thing is to pick a person that you feel some kind of connection or like your nervous system goes, okay, I can, I can relax a little bit and listen yeah. now. Yeah. Mm. Well, tell people how they can find you if they want to get a reading from you or just if they want to see more about what all this is about. Yes. So my name is Novalee Wilder and you can find me online at NovaleeWilder.com. I'm on Instagram at Novalee Wilder, Twitter or X or what have you. Um, <laughs> I've written the two books that you can get um, anywhere books are sold. So that's Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones, Books A Million, Buy it from your local bookstore. You can order them a little bit of numerology and a little bit of angel numbers. And then I have the podcast and I have readings and sessions. Both of you want like a little short, sweet reading for you and a longer in depth reading. I also do business names and baby names mm. and anything you want named or looked at, I can help you with. Oh, that's awesome. I'll put all that in the show notes um, really quick for my mother. What does mm -hmm. 555 mean if she sees 555? So I would love to know her birthday. Uh, mm -hmm. January 4th. Oh, gosh. Hopefully she doesn't <laughs> care that I say her. Um, 1948. 1948. Okay. So five energy is always connected to Mercury. Um, so this is like communication, exchange, money, messages. There's like a message about voice and I'm like touching my throat as I'm saying it like something needs to be said heard stated like there's some message that's coming through depending on like you know her own numbers and like mm -hmm. that thing because she's a four I would be like is there an idea that's not being 
um, pursued? Is there a rebellion or a revolution or whatever that means to her that's not like fully allowed out? Like, is your rebel allowed to speak? Does your inner teenager <laughs> have some shit they need to get off their chest? <laughs> is there some fun there that is maybe like, in need of, of coming out. Um, yeah, I mean, five energy is always like, deliver the message, make the connection, um, kind of like touch, like, like um, honor the voice that wants to come through or the message that wants to come through. And also maybe the message is like, yeah, we are talking to you. <laughs> 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 like maybe that question sometimes people will see that number or like those numbers when they're like oh, I'm looking for a sign not that sign well not that sign I, like you know they'll be like sorry to make that but like you know they'll be dismissive we can have that thing of like I really need a sign and then we see like I don't know 15 butterflies and we're like hmm, seemed like a sign but not signy enough for me so I would just say like yeah you are being spoken to now, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to make more space in your life for like being spoken to? Like, could you meditate or devote like, a, you know, a, like a everyday task? Like that's how I often do my meditations or whatever. I'm like, I might not sit down for five to 10 minutes, but I'll be like, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm not going to put in you know music or anything in my right. ears I'm just gonna go for a walk and this walk I dedicate to whatever message wants to come through okay so like sometimes having I find that for many people that like stillness is infuriating but some kind of activity kind of mm -hmm. calms their system enough like I mean it could be the dishes do the dishes and kind of dedicate them to your spiritual team and see if there's anything that is coming through or like some knot that you need to unravel or something like that. Oh, that's yeah. super interesting. That. Yeah, I or, will. Of course, you know, also look it up in the, a little bit of angel numbers. Yes, I'm definitely going to get that book because there's just random numbers that come up for me. I don't see the same yeah. ones all of the time. Um, but it is true that your awareness is key because if once you start becoming aware of seeing 1111 or whatever, all of a sudden it seems like those synchronicities just keep happening and happening and got to just pay yes. attention. Nova Lee, this was so awesome. Thank you so much for your time and for being on my show. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for having me. It was an absolute joy. All right. Well, we'll be in touch. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.